Hey, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for being here. In today's video, we're going to be discussing seven things that I did as a new Poshmark seller to start seeing some momentum. So these seven things took me from getting a sale to two a week to start seeing daily consistent sales. So if you're ready to learn what these seven things are, make sure to give me a thumbs up to support this channel if you happen to like the content. Don't forget to subscribe for more informative tutorials like this one and keep on watching. The very first thing I improved as a new seller was the quality of my listing. So I'm gonna go show you my phone screen to kind of explain to you what I mean by that. Here we are in my Poshmark closet. I scrolled all the way to the bottom to get to some of my earliest listings. I'm first going to go over this and tell you a little bit of what I think I was doing wrong in the beginning. And then we'll move on to my most current listing so that I can show you some things that I feel I have improved on. So here are some of my earliest listings. The first thing right off the bat I see is that in the beginning, I wasn't getting that much for my items. There are a few items that sold for pretty good amounts of money, but even the amount I was paying for these items was too much that my profit wasn't enough. So I'm scrolling down here to show you one example of what a bad picture is in my opinion. So this G by Guess dress, in the cover photo, you cannot even see the dress in its entirety. I mean, there are many of these kind of photos all over Poshmark and they still sell. But in my opinion, I think it's better when you can see the item entirely on the cover photo. So I'm going to click on that and check out what's going on with it. So the cover photo is on a wall that's plain. So that is good. But then we scroll down and I take pictures everywhere trying to find the best lighting on my kitchen table, on this pink board in the back. Another thing is that I don't even include measurements, not in the pictures and not in the description either. I think that this description is a pretty good one. It's detailed, but I think I may have taken too long trying to figure out what to say. There are so many other keywords that I could have added in this description as well. So I have strapless dress there. I have night out, so that's good. I said that I used it for a photo shoot. Someone may be looking for that and those keywords may bring up this item. But there are so many other things that I could have added here. Maybe like, let me see. It is kind of like a full wrap dress. It has a ruffled top. It is chiffon material. It is like a what midi dress. It is a high low hem dress, a full wrap in the back, the crisscross straps. All of those are things that I could have added in the description. So here are some of my most current listings. And as you can see, the quality has definitely improved before my background was all over the place when I was just trying to figure out what was the best thing to use. Eventually, I started just using my wall in my room, which I show in other videos on how I take pictures. And for some items, I will also use a display board. So it's like a science project display board. The one I use is by Elmer's Glue and I buy it at Walmart and it's big and it gives me that clear white background that I want. So I'm going to click onto these Levi's vintage jeans. So the background looks clear and white because I used an app called remove.bg, which I will link in the description. The ones towards the bottom is just a normal wall in my room. I don't worry about editing all the pictures to have the white background. I just do the cover photo, which is the very first photo that people will see. But as we keep scrolling down, you see that I take pictures from every angle. So I take pictures from the very front of the jeans, then we get closer to the top, the bottom, the back, a close up of the back, the tags. And here you can see that I'm pointing towards a small stain that these jeans have just to make it very clear that these are flawed. And I add my measurements here in the photos, the waist, the inseam, the rise, 
even the uh, pant leg opening I will add sometimes and then I also add the care tag, the material tag, the size, all of that so people know exactly what they are getting. When we get to the description, here at the top is my title and I make sure to include as many keywords as I can. So these are vintage. I wrote the style number. They're mom jeans. I put the size and especially the most important part is putting the brand in the very front. Here in the description, the very first line is basically the title reinstated in a different way. So I'm adding what the item actually is. We're trying to use slightly different words than the title at the top. I take this as an opportunity to add even more keywords. So I added high rise, tapered, denim, jeans, classic, all of those keywords in that title in the description. Below that, we have details. So this is where I take the time to add as many details about the item as I can, while also keeping in mind to add keywords that people may be using when looking for this type of item. So I added the size. I added that they're casual, retro, blue jeans. I let them know that if they want measurements, they can look at the photos. Then I do the color of the item and just explain a little bit more about it. Below that, I tell them what the condition of the item is, which here it's wrong, it is flawed, so I'll have to go in and change that. But here's where I would normally tell them the condition and explain any flaw, so I'll have to go in and change that. I didn't notice that I didn't state the flaw here. But yes, normally I like to add the flaw in the pictures and in the description so that no one misses it. And then lastly, I just tell them a little bit about myself, that I'm a fast shipper, that I accept offers, and just thank them for stopping by. And just to summarize, what you want to make sure you have to have a good quality listing is a clear white background if possible. Make sure to check out my video on how to take pictures for Poshmark. There I show you my tips and tricks for getting clear crisp photos for Poshmark. You want to make sure to include measurements. In the beginning, I never included measurements. Now I take measurements as I'm taking the pictures, which in that video I just mentioned, I also show how I do that. Take pictures of every angle so that people feel confident when they're buying and they know exactly what they're getting. If they can't see your item, clearly and in every angle, they're not going to know for sure in what quality this item is. But if you can show them clearly like this item is in good condition, they'll feel more confident to go through with the sale. Also, do your homework with these keywords. There's so many different things to call items, so many different patterns, designs, collars, sleeves, so many things to call all these items that you may be finding at the thrift store. And the more you know about them and you include them in your description, the better. And lastly, just don't get too hung up on being perfect and having the perfect listing in the beginning trust that you will continue to improve. It's better if you get things out there, get things listed, even if you don't have all of the equipment to make it the best it can be right now. Take everything I just said and do the best you can with it. Just don't let it stop you from listing. Next thing I did as a new seller was I listed my items in bundles, also known as lots. So when you're getting started, maybe you're cleaning out your closet and that's the things you will be listing, which is fine. It's what I recommend. It's what I did. And it's the perfect way to start because all of that is essentially pure profit. You're not paying for anything to get started. You're using what you have. So that's great. If the things you're getting out of your closet are high-end, desirable items on Poshmark, then they are going to sell fast. No one is going to mind paying $7.11 for shipping for an item that they really want, that they've been looking for. But more than likely, the stuff you have in your closet aren't going to meet that criteria. Most of the time, what we have are things that we ended up buying because we like it, not necessarily the mass population on Poshmark. So if you have brands like Cat and Jack, Target brands, Walmart brands, even mall brands like Abercrombie, Forever 21, different brands that aren't 
that expensive, they are not going to sell as fast because to begin with, they aren't that much. And then they're paying $7.11. And in most occasions, it's going to end up being cheaper for them to go to the store and buy the item at full price, brand new instead. In the beginning, most of what I was listing was just ma brands, nothing too special, nothing too desirable. So what I started doing instead was bundling my items and listing them as one. So I would take all of my daughter's shirts that were the same size and put them together and sell them as one. And even after that, I didn't expect to get much back from it because as I said, it was nothing too special. I just wanted to sell that clothes to number one, get some money out of it. And number two, to learn the process of how Poshmark works, the shipping, the sales, the offers, all of those things that come with Poshmark. At one point, I was also gifted big, large trash bags of clothes and all of that clothes was the same thing, just small brands, nothing too special. And I did the same thing with that clothes. I divided it up into the sizes and listed them as one when the sizes and styles were similar. I sometimes also divided the clothes and made outfits. So I would sell five outfits as one listing. And that's how I got rid of the majority of that clothing. So if you have those kind of brands that aren't that popular on Poshmark or that don't resell for much on Poshmark, then try that. Bundle them and list them as one. The next thing I did was actually started listing desirable items. So once I got over the hump of selling the stuff that was in my closet, and I started going out thrifting, slowly I started to learn what is actually desirable and what is not. Now this is a process which I'm still in the process of learning and I think I will forever be because things change all the time, styles, trends. So this is something you must be studying all the time. Now in my opinion, I think that everything eventually sells on Poshmark because there's 60 million users there's gotta be someone out there who wants the item you have, even if it's not a name brand, or even if it's not desired by a lot of people. The problem is if you list an item that is not desirable by many people, it's just going to take longer to sell. And when it does sell, it may not sell for all that much. It takes just as long to list an item that will make you 15, 20, $30 profit in a couple of days or a week than it does to list items that are mall brands that will eventually sell, but it's gonna take longer and it's gonna make you less money. So I think that you should be working towards getting a hold of items that a lot of people want so that they can sell faster and you can make more money. As I said, this is something that I'm still in the process of getting better at, but I think that I'm doing a good job. And with every thrift trip that I do, I come back with items that are selling faster and faster. My sell through rate is getting better and better. So I'm going to share some things that I do to study what sells. So the very first thing is here on Poshmark. So I'm going to be clicking on shop, which is here at the bottom. You have your options here. We're gonna click on shop. We're gonna scroll down until you see where it says parties. And then we're going to click on this all parties button right here. And from there, the very top parties are the ones coming up and the ones at the bottom are the ones that are already passed. But you can do this with any of these parties. I'm going to click on the party that happened last night and then we're going to scroll through the filtering options until we get to the one that says availability, which is actually the very last filtering option. And we're going to scroll all the way, or actually, we're going to select the last option, which says sold items. And then from there, you can see everything that's sold in that party. And you can scroll and just look at the brands. I also like to click into the actual photo and scroll through these pictures so that I can get to the brand tag because for me, looking at the brand tags helps me remember more when I'm at the thrift store. Sometimes these brands are written like in cursive and it's hard to read, so if you just hear it, you may not find it as easily when you're outsourcing, but if you see the actual brand and what it looks like, it may be easier for you. So I try to do this as often as I can every night at the nine o'clock party 
Well, nine o'clock for me. I don't know what time it would be in other time zones, but for me at the nine o'clock party, I try to go and look at the solds to see what has sold recently. I write down the brands. I have a notebook that I keep where I keep notes of my research that I'm doing. I write down the brands. I make sure I look at the tag. And another thing you can filter by is price. So if you go up here where we're looking at the filters, you can go to price and sometimes I will go and select 25, 50 to 100 and 250 so that it'll only show me the brands that have been selling in that price range so that I can make sure that I'm looking for items that are going to make me the most profit. So that's one way that I find out about these brands, but the other is just here on YouTube. I watch videos titled, What Sold? So these YouTubers, resellers make these videos every week where they share what has sold for them and explain a little bit about the history and why they chose it, if it sells for them usually, things like that. I will list some of my favorite YouTubers to watch for this content down in the description. So check them out there, but they also do thrift hauls. So I watch that. I love Kaylee's videos. I don't remember her last name, but Kaylee, her thrift hauls. I always mention her here on my channel. So she's really good to watch for the thrift haul. She does good at explaining why she picked up certain things. She makes sure to show us the tag. And as I said, I love looking at the tags because that's how I remember most. So those are just some of the ways that I've been studying these brands. And I suggest you get yourself into a little routine where you do this a little bit every day or maybe just a couple times a week just to make sure that these brands are fresh on your mind when you go outsourcing. And the more you list these desirable brands, the more money and the more sales you will start seeing. Next thing is that I stocked my closet with variety. So as I've been saying, I started selling from my own closet. So most of these sizes were very similar. There wasn't that much to choose from. So when I started actually shopping, I made sure that I, number one, started listing more so that there's more options in my closet for people to choose from, but also started listing more from different categories like dresses, tops, jeans, shoes, bags, accessories. I try to look in my closet and see what I have going on, what I'm missing lately. If I see that I'm running low on jeans, the next time I try to focus on jeans, that way my closet stays stocked with a variety of items but also in sizes i try to get small sizes medium sizes all the way up to plus sizes and actually plus size clothes sells really well for me so i do intentionally go and seek out that type of clothing plus sizes that are in great styles i try to stay away from petite and small sizes but I do like to have at least some of it in my closet because there's all sizes of people and everyone is looking for a good deal and good clothes. So as much as possible, try to cater to all sizes and all different styles and make sure you have enough categories in your closet so that people are able to choose from a lot of things and they are more likely to make bundles. They can make themselves a, an outfit with a shirt and jeans and then bundle that together and buy two instead of one. Even if you have a certain theme in mind that you want your closet to be, like you want it to be just boho, just street style, career wear, even if that's the case for you, that you want a curated closet, it's still wise to have a range of sizes and a range of categories. Next thing I did was started sharing my closet a lot more. So as you may or may not know, every time you click share on your listing and you share it to your followers, that's going to bring your listing up high on the search results. So I'm going to go onto the Poshmark app and try to show you what I mean, just in case you don't know. I'm going to click at the top and search for something to buy. Let's just go ahead and put Adidas shirt. And then it's going to show me all the results of everything that's for sale that's an Adidas shirt. So then if we click on the very first listing, we can see that it was updated 11 seconds ago. Sorry, I'm not sure if you can see that. 
but then the next listing that I clicked on was updated 21 seconds ago. And as we continue clicking the results for Adidas shirt, the time it was updated goes up and up. So that means that every time you share your listing, it's gonna go to the first spot. And it's been proven time and time again that listings and anything for sale that's up higher in the search results gets the most attention and the most sales. Companies like Amazon and Google, eBay, they have these programs where the sellers of those platforms can pay them to promote their listings so that they're in prominent places like up high in the search results. But with Poshmark, they don't have such a program yet. All you have to do is share your items and share them as much as possible. There's people out here who use bots. So they have a bot who is sharing their closet all day, every day. Now I don't recommend you do that because bots are illegal. That's something I did in the beginning. I used a bot, but I didn't know that you couldn't. So as soon as I figured that out I canceled the subscription I haven't used one since but there's people who still do it so you're not going to be able to compete with them if you're not sharing enough so when I was a new Poshmark seller I knew that you needed to share because I heard it in all of these videos but I was only doing it like once or twice a day then I started to realize that people were sharing a lot more than I was. So if I wanted to have a little bit of chance to make these sales, I needed to share a lot more. So here was my sharing schedule. So early in the morning, just to freshen up my closet, at 11 in the morning, which is a party time, at 12, at two, another party time, at four, at six, party time, at eight, at nine, party time and at 10. Those were the times that I normally share. Now they aren't specific. I didn't like go right at eight and wanted to share. If I had the time, I would, but if it was 8.30, 8.20, that was fine. That schedule I just shared with you is central standard times, but basically what I'm doing is sharing at every party time and one time in between, and that equals out to about nine times a day. I'm sharing my closet nine times a day, and I've timed myself before with about 170 active listings. It takes me about four minutes each time. So if you can do that, that'd be great. But if not, at least share at the party times because those are the times that people are most active on the app. Poshmark chose those party times for a reason and they're sending out notifications about their parties. So even if your items do not fit the theme of the party at that time, go ahead and share your entire closet to your followers. So nowadays, I don't actually share my closet by myself. I pay a company called Reseller Assistant to share my closet. They claim that they don't use bots. Many people have emailed them and asked them to clarify. They actually assign you a VA when you sign up with them. So you put in all your information, the times you want your closet shared, and you pay them, and then they will give you a VA to share your closet. So that's what I do. So now I don't have to worry about that. My closet gets shared all throughout the day for $25 a week, which is so worth it to me. If you want to check them out, their link will be in the description. But if you're not there yet where you're ready to invest in something like this, just share a little more than you're sharing right now if you want to see a few more sales. Next thing I did was I followed other poshers and shared their stuff. Now I know this can be controversial. Some people recommend it, some recommend against it. We'll get to that for now. Let me tell you what my little routine was. So I shared that schedule of the times that I shared. So I did that, I would share my closet throughout the day. But when one of those times was a party time, I also did some other things. So one was that I went to Poshmark I'm sorry, I hope you can see what I'm doing by showing you the screen like this. I think it's just easier because you can see what I'm clicking. When you're on the home screen, you can see a little guy with like a search up at the top. That's where you go to find new users. So then we're going to click on new people. And from new people, you have two options. You have fresh closets and just join. So the first thing I do was click on just join. And then we're going to click those blue buttons that say follow. So just join and follow people. 
So I go and follow about 10 rows. So there's two, four, six, seven people in one row for me, at least for this phone, seven people. And then I just scroll up and get a new row and click follow, follow, follow all this row, then one more row. So I would do seven rows of that. Then we're going to click on fresh closets. And then when we get to fresh closets, these are people who just posted something for sale on Poshmark. So we're going to go show them some love, share some of their stuff. You're going to click on the very first person. And then when you get to that first person, what you're gonna do is go to their followers, okay? And once you go to their followers, some of the people you will already be following, but there will be some blue ones that you can go ahead and follow because you haven't yet. Now, the reason why I like doing that is because these people just posted stuff brand new on their closet. So the people who have followed them are active on the app. So they are more likely to go back and follow you. I'm sorry if all this sounds confusing, but basically you're going to fresh closets, you're clicking into the first user, you're going to their followers and following their followers. So just scroll, follow all their followers, click all those blue buttons you see there, click the back button. Now you are where you started and you're gonna share her fresh item and go back, follow her and do the next person. So you click his profile, is it a he? No, it's a she. We're gonna click her profile, go to her followers, follow all her followers, go back, share her item, and then go back, follow her and go to the next person. So that's what I would do. And then we're going to go to shop right here, scroll down until you get to the parties. And as I said, I would do this only at party time. So normally there'd be a party that was going on right now, but since there isn't, I'm going to go to a party that happened already to show you what I would do. So once we're here at the party, I would go and share, I think it was like 15 of these squares, sometimes more if I had time. And by squares, I mean these four items. I don't know why I would call it squares. So that's another square right here. I'd share those four items, then this four items, then these four items and on and on. And I would do 15 of those squares. So that would be like 15 times four. And I would do that at every party time. So in the beginning, that was my little routine. I would share my nine times. When one of those times was a party time, I would go do the just join follows and then the fresh closet shares and follows and then the shares from the parties. And I actually did this the other day just to time myself and I took a screenshot. So let me tell you how long all of this took me. It took me eight minutes and 30 seconds to do that whole routine. And that's with 170 something active listings. So in the beginning of my journey, I did not have that many active listings. So most likely it took me a lot less than that. And in the beginning, it was me and my kids doing this. It was me and my three kids. So it was four people dividing that job throughout the day. And as I said, I didn't have that many listings. So maybe it would take five minutes each time. I told them that I would pay them what I was going to pay reseller assistant. And if they ever wanted to stop doing it, then they could. So my closet started growing. Maybe it started taking them more time or they got bored of it. So one by one, they each started opting out. They didn't want to help anymore, which was fine because I always gave them the choice. So that's when I hired reseller assistant. They share my closet throughout the day. And I go in and do this following routine that I just showed you every once in a while maybe once or twice a day, and sometimes I skip a day and it's fine. Now let's get to the controversial part of this. So some people advise wholeheartedly against this. They believe that sharing other people's stuff and following others makes no difference in the amount of sales you'll get. They think that you should share only your closet, focus only on your closet, because sharing your closet, it's going to move your items up at the top of the search results. And if you share someone's item and they share yours, that's not going to move your item up in the search results. Only when you share your own closet will your items be more visible in the search results. So I've done an experiment where I didn't do any of these activities and I only shared my closet for an entire week and I didn't see that much of a difference. But then there's also been times where sales were a little slow. So I decided to be more active and do these activities and sales actually picked up. 
the amount of bundles I got, the full price sales and the offers made to me from others, all of that picked up. So I really don't know. I don't know if it helps for sure. I don't know if it for sure doesn't. But I think that one thing we can all agree on is that Poshmark rewards activity. Their main goal is to be like a social app. That's why they have the sharing, the likes, the following, the stories. And just like all other social apps, the more active you are, the more you engage, the more people will be active with your stuff and engage with your listings. In the beginning, when you don't have that much to list and you can't be that consistent with listing because you don't have that much inventory, I don't think it will hurt you to do these things, to follow other postures, to share their stuff. If you share someone's item and then they share yours and they have, you know, 40,000 followers, your item has the potential to be seen by a lot more people than if you were to just share your stuff and that's it. Later on down the road, it may not be that important, but to begin with, at the end of the day, it's just going to mean more potential eyes on your items. The last thing we'll talk about is how I made use of Poshmark seller tools to make more sales. So there are many tools that you can use on Poshmark to increase your sales, but I'm going to talk about the two most important ones. And the first one is offers to likers. So when someone is scrolling on through Poshmark and they stumble upon your item because they searched for it, they saw it in the feed, someone else shared it, whatever the case may be, or you shared it to a party, they will like it and you will get a notification that someone has liked your item. Once someone likes your item, you have the opportunity to send them an offer. This is why I recommend that you price your items a little bit higher than what you expect to get for the item, because that way you leave room for discounted shipping and for offers. So let me show you an example. So here on the Poshmark home screen, you're going to go to the little bell notification. And there you can see all your notifications and they're all mixed in here together, your offers, your likes, your bundles, but you can also click one of the tabs on top to get to a specific type of notification. So if you scroll up here, you can get to likes so that you can see only the likes. So these are all the likes I've gotten recently. I'm going to go to my most recent one, which I already sent an offer, but I'm still gonna go through and show you how it works. So we're going to click on the very top like, which is this green J. Crew jacket. And then at the bottom, you will see the offer and price drop option. So if you click on that, you get to choose from a private offer to liker offer, or you get to choose from a public price drop offer. The private will only go to the likers and then the public, everyone can see this new price. So you have to go in and actually change your price, but private, you don't have to change your price. Only the likers will see that. So we're going to click on offers to likers. And then from there, you'll fill out this information. What is your new price and what shipping discount do you want to give? You have to give a shipping discount with the offers to likers, either the 212 what that you end up paying or the free shipping so with offers to likers it's a must i wish it wasn't because sometimes there's not room for that but you do have to so i'm going to go ahead and click on my new offer let's say i want to offer 20 dollars, so that's 12 dollars off and we're going to click on the 4.99 shipping so then below it lets me know what my earnings will be if i give them a discount to $20 and the $4.99 shipping, my earnings would be $13.88. From there, you just click submit if that's what you want to do, and it will go out to all of the likers. So as I said, if you want to use this tool, make sure that you're pricing your items with enough room for you to be able to send out these offers. I normally go into the Poshmark app, look at what other people are selling their items for, check out what the item has sold for in the past as well, which I think I'll make a future video on how to do these things. But once I figure out the price that I want, 
I will add 10 to $12 to that price just to leave enough room. And also because sometimes people just end up buying it outright and I end up getting a higher price for it as well. But moving along to the next seller tool, which is closet clear out. So this is something that I did not know at all in the beginning. One day I decided to go and drop my prices throughout my closet because I wasn't seeing any sales as a new seller. So I dropped all the prices and a few hours later I go back and I see like maybe two to three sales, which was so exciting as a new seller. I'm like, what? So I dropped all my prices and that happened. Eventually I put two and two together. It was closet clear out day. That's why I made those sales. So on closet clear out day, if you drop the price of your item by at least 10% of the historical price, Poshmark will send out a notification to all of the likers and an email to all of the likers telling them that you've dropped your price and they're going to get discounted shipping of $4.99. And the cool thing is that the discounted shipping is not going to come out of your pocket. It's coming out of Poshmark's uh, pocket. So this is a tool that I love to make use of. Anytime that it is closet clear out day and I get a like, I will send a message to the likers and tell them that it's closet clear out day if they would like to get the item discounted with discounted shipping let me know and i'll set it up for them so here we are on the poshmark homepage. at the very bottom we're going to click on the bell little news icon from there we're going to scroll on top and go to the likes and these are the people who have liked your item recently. So you're going to click on the very first one and we're going to click on her profile picture. From there, we're going to click the little bag icon that's at the top right hand corner next to the three dots. That's the bundle icon. And then it's going to take us to the bundle, but we want to switch it to sale mode because right now I think it's on buyer mode. So we're going to click the three dots on the top right hand corner. And then we're going to click to switch to cell view, which is the little arrow going in like a zigzag type motion. And then you can scroll down and there will be all of her likes that she's ever liked from your closet, which in this case, it's just one. So then we click the little bag with the plus button below the item and that will add that liked item to her bundle then we can add a comment so here we can click add comments and if i click again for my phone it will show up the clipboard and here are my saved messages that i send people on poshmark so one of those is this one here hey poshmark is offering 4.99 shipping to anyone who likes an item today this discount will be activated by lower the price of this and then there i can input whatever this is in this case it's a jacket and then it goes on and on. And then I put the price after house, $20. Let me know if you're interested. I'll lower the price and you'll get notification with your discounts and then I'll post it. So I learned that method from Becky Park. She's a YouTuber, a reseller. She makes videos. I will try to find a video where she talked about this method and link it down below so you can see a little more of how it works. But basically you can just lower the price of your item by 10% and not send them this message and they will still get the notifications from Poshmark. But I like to go in and send the message because number one, it opens up the conversation so they can ask me questions if they have any. They just feel more comfortable doing that if you reach out first. But also it just makes you stand out from the crowd because they get a notification that they have a comment which is a lot more enticing than getting a notification of a sale that they probably get all day, every day on Poshmark from other likes they've given to other people. So every day that it's clear out day, I use this method all throughout the day for all of my likes. And many people do respond back and say, yes, please drop the price. And then I will go in and drop the price. And some people never answer. But it's okay because then my price stays the same and I don't have to worry about dropping it and putting it back up and it's just a lot more hassle. So those are the things that I did as a new seller to start seeing more consistent sales. I applied all of those methods I just shared with you as much as I could and the more I did all of that, 
the more sales I got. So I really hope that this has been helpful to you. In the comments below, let me know what one thing or more are you going to apply into your Poshmark reselling strategy to start seeing more sales. And that's all for me today. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel. I'll see you next time.